What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Hookshots podcast. And oh my gosh, is this a special one? You want to talk about a location? Uh, we are here in the King Leisure Suite of the Sheraton Four Points, Westwood Boulevard, Orlando, Florida. Um, this is iCast. This is the real iCast. We're not on the show floor uh, talking about products and things. This is where this is this is where memories are made back in the motel room, and we're going to make some memories tonight with a very special guest on the very uncomfortable couch in the King Leisure Suite. With us here is Ross Robertson. Hello. Okay, back off the mic a little bit. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. I'm going to tweak those levels already. You've said one thing. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, anyway, you're, you're wondering what possessed me to, to do this. And, uh, you know, here, the, here's the answer, right? So how many, how many ICAST have you been to now? I think it's 18. So you're at 18, 18 years of ICAST. This is year 14 for me. And, uh, I don't know about you, but every year when I come to ICAST and for people who don't know what that is, what is it? International, uh, Fishing something, something. <laughs> <laughs> no one actually knows. That's the million dollars. If you can answer that, you probably I cast be- you out. I don't know. I, I Actually, it's 14 years. I don't even know what it stands for. International Coalition of Associated Sport Fishing Trades. Does that sound? I, I think you might have hit the million dollar question. Right. Okay. Uh, so if anybody doesn't know what that is, um, it's the big tackle industry trade show. Um, you know, it's the fishing industry has its annual trade show every year just like every uh other industry so you know i i get a lot of people especially when we're here we're posting stuff on social that are like man i would i would love to go to that show you know because it's not open it's not open to the public right you have to be in you have to be an exhibitor or media or a buyer and uh you know i laugh at those and i'm like really would you would you like to be here you know uh, because I think over a decade of doing it, like, puts a different spin on new people. You know what I mean? How, how are you feeling after 18 years? It's, it's kind of like working out at the New Year's. Like, you're, like, all pumped up. And then, like, at day three at the gym, you're like, <laughs> screw this noise. <laughs> like, let's just eat the bonbons and get fat and just get a bigger belt. And listen, for, for the record, like, I'm not, I'm not trashing iCast at all. iCast is, is very cool. Uh, you know, but it is still a trade show, no different from any other trade show. You know, you're walking around on concrete floors for three days. You know, your feet, your, your feet hurt, your do- the dogs bark. Um, but it's cool because, like, the counterpart to this is the SHOT Show, which I don't know if you've ever been to. That's the You have been to the SHOT Show. I have been to SHOT Show as well. Okay. So SHOT Show is the gun and hunting side. And uh, at least, you know, for my crew with Field and Stream, that's, like, super business. Like, you wear a suit and tie on the floor. And iCast, man, it's just like throw on some flip flops and a t-shirt and let's do a trade show. It's fishing. So like it, 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 it's super laid back. It's the crowd. I think it's the time of year. It's a lot of things, but I mean, even backing up, you know, you talk about this, like, yeah, it's cool. Like, I mean, there are certain things and we'll get into this. It's like any other job, like you can do anything and you do it long enough and it's a job. But for me and you, the reality is, is it's kind of important, maybe not as important as it used to be, but like, for most people and people listening here, fishing is their hobby. Like, this is how I feed myself. Yeah. Well, so, you yeah. know, so it's it's a different deal. And when that's what you're doing and you're going here and this is how you're making your living, it's a little different than like, oh, cool, look at these new crankbaits. Yeah. Well, okay. And, and yeah. So I think the other cool perspective between you and I is that we're here to do very different things. Like, we do kind of different things. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I agree with that. But... I don't know. I met a handful of people on the floor just this year who this was their first show, right? And uh, I was like, you know, what do you think? And they're all like, oh, dude, mine's freaking blown. You know what I mean? And I don't throw the, like, jaded 14-year guy. Was sh- that day one? Did you sh- did you need to ask him on day two or day three? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It, it was actually day one and day two. But – um you know, it, it's it's kind of like I don't I don't throw the like old time or fourteen year jargon at him. I actually say that's great, man. Like, let I'm, me tell I'm, you something, whippersnapper. Yeah, no, I'm like, dude, I'm I'm pumped. Like, you, your mind should be blown because 
to be here and and sort of get that inside look at everything new, you know, everything that's coming out before, uh, you know, a lot of, of the public knows about it is very, very cool. But straight up, the difference, which you were referring to, like the guy who's like, oh, check out these cool new crankbaits. The way to do iCast is to have zero agenda. And I haven't had that since my first year here, 2005, as an intern at Saltwater Sportsman. And I got here and I'm like, I asked my editor, I'm like, what do you want me to do? And he's like, get a notebook, walk around, look at everything, and write down things you think would be cool for us to call in later and actually use and review. And nobody knew who I was. I had no contacts. Nobody talked to me. And it was freaking awesome because you got to just walk around and look at stuff. I don't disagree, but the reality is, is if you're at a professional conference, because it's like if we're at the National Accounting Board, right? Like it's your job. How how many people that are qualified to be here or should be here can be here and not have an agenda? The reality is not many. Well, not many. Although you know, I think um, you know. Look, we're not we're not going to do a, another pro staff podcast. I just did that, but with sort of the influx of like you know the younger crowd here and it's a lot of that pro staff stuff i feel like there are more people who find their way in and and don't have that hardline agenda so people like all the time with me are like oh dude you go on icast you make sure you check this out or like check that out check this dude <laughs> this is the way that icast goes right you know if you don't have the luxury of being able to walk around and just look and sort of keep your head down you know the way it works is it's appointments i'm sure you have appointments too so you know uh, in the in the weeks and months prior to this, you just sort of bombarded with uh, you know emails from companies wanting to make a scheduled booth appointment for you to come, and they have your undivided attention for <laughs> for a half hour to go through their new product spiel. And I get that, you know, I it, that's it's, wait, there's more. What's more, sham wow. Sham, there's no sham wows here. That's what I mean with the 30 minute spiel. It's like a sham wow. Well, yeah. I mean, sometimes, but I, I mean, I understand too that like those people's jobs is to be able to go back to their bosses and say, well, I got Joe from Field and Stream here. I got Ross. Here. You know what I mean? So it's like you're helping them too, you know? So I don't mind it. It's, it's just part of the game. But I, that's, I think what people think is to, you just show up here and walk around and look at shit and that's, well, That's certainly not what I do. Or if you're trying to like shoot video on the floor, it's hard to walk 20 feet without somebody else stopping you, and then you end up, you know, in, and, and the, the day the and day the just thing. fades. Like yeah. it's the day. All of a sudden, it's six o'clock and it's over. That's exactly right. And at four o'clock, every booth has booth beers, which is cool, right? Free beer, free beer is good. I like free beer, but there's actually two hours of show left when the beer starts flowing, and if you get trapped at a booth beer situation. Well, now you just shot your entire two last hours of the show. Especially if there's booth babes and booth beer. Right. Like, that's a double whammy that you're just... And if they're giving you a free hat, it's like, I may as well sleep here, you know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> God forbid if there's a koozie involved. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, for for all the people who, who, who want to be here, man, if you can find your way in in a situation where you can just... Walk around. I mean, it's, it's, I've been here for 14 years. It's probably been 12 years since I could honestly say that I put eyes on everything at this show. I mean, I can't remember the last time I could say I looked at every booth and the show's not that big. Like you could easily, you know, do that in a day. So like the reality for me, because me and you are here for very different reasons. Yeah. When I first in my earlier years, because my career was different then too, right? I mean, I didn't know every single person in the room, not that I do now, but it's much different. Right. I was here doing product galleries, which is not much different than what you or some you know people at your company have done or, or do. Now I don't do any of those for the exact reason you've said. I mean, I give up money for that just because I can't get anything else done. And I'm on such a crazy agenda. Yeah, I was running crunch. around like, like a supermarket sweep right like literally right well so i think people know what i do what what tell them what what you do with your walleyes and your fishing and all this stuff what are you what are you doing here i've been called a hybrid and i choose <laughs> to believe that that is a positive thing so you know the reality is, is when i'm here i may be um helping launch a product that i help design uh for one company and another company i may just be lending my angler credibility because i'm one of their spokesmen and you know spokespersons right, in right. so many in so ways well, don't hide it dude you're like a you're a sponsored angler and like you get paid for those sponsorships 
That's right. And then, you know, sometimes we're here and we're, we're doing a little bit of glad handing. We're making, we're putting faces with names. You know, people turn around in companies. You may have a new marketing person. We're, we're getting to see that person. All these emails that we go through, we're taking their temperature. We're letting them know what we're doing. And, you know, for where do you take your temp- their temperature when you take it? It depends on how many zeros are involved. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, sometimes you got to buy them a $12 hot dog. You know, it's, yeah. It's just, That's the other thing. That's the other thing. I've run into some pretty interesting people at the big round table with twelve hour, twelve dollar hot dog. Yeah, yeah, twelve dollar. Well, look, anybody, I don't care what your profession is. If you've gone to a trade show for it, like you make it a point not to eat the shit on the floor because it is a twelve dollar hot dog and communal tables. And inevitably, I end up at the communal table with some dude who is really dying for a friend. Yeah, I must have a look. I don't get that. I usually get the overseas people where they're, I know they're talking smack about me, <laughs> but I, I can't make it up, and I just give them a look like, I'm, a, I'm the crazy white guy here, dude, so I don't know where you're from. I, I know your badge is not accurate because your name's not Jim Smith, but here's the deal. You just need to move on, so eat your $10 piece of pizza and get up Well, it's funny. and you, find a toilet. It's funny you bring that up because that I and I cast is international, right? So... Um, I mean, there's there's companies here from from all over the world, and it's funny because like I think back to my early days here, and like, those first few years, like the game was how much free tackle could I walk out the door with, right? To the point where one year, like I had to buy another duffel bag because I couldn't get it all home, like, and I was still at Saltwater Sportsman at the time, but you know, you don't have any any other agenda, like I said, so I can spend twenty minutes at the booth explaining what I do and who I work for and, oh, are, are these Marlin dredges new and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, well, swing by on Friday, last day of the show. We'll send you home with one. And, like, next thing I know, I'm walking out with, like, a 12-foot Marlin dredge with 200 rubber squids on it. And I'm stoked, but I have no idea, like, you know, how to get that home. But the, but where I'm going with that is, like, one of the, the – I don't do that anymore because now I, I just take – I just bring my fanny pack. That's all I take on the plane. Man satchel. Man satchel. And now it's like if it's something I really want or really want to test, I'm just like, just give me your card, bro. I'll, I'll email you after the show. Mail it to me. Mail it to me. But, you know, some of the coolest stuff you see is some of the foreign stuff. Like for me, like the, like the Japanese dudes and their tuna poppers, their offshore poppers, I mean, like nothing you can buy right. here. Like guys spy baiting and Nico he, rigs. That wasn't in Oklahoma. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So – you know, back in the day when I used to try and swag out here, you know, you'd walk up and everything's in Japanese. Like they barely speak a lick of English, but they have these incredibly beautiful lures. And uh, I'm just like, hi. And they're like, oh, they look at your name tag. It's like, oh, Field and Stream. I'm like, yes, Field and Stream. Uh, you know, so like they're trying to translate a little bit. And then I get to the point where I'm like, uh, no so, one in the whole booth speaks anything I can understand. Like some, I've literally <laughs> seen it where like there's no one there and they there's zero English going on. Yeah, so like I'm trying to have a conversation and explain like that we're editorial and like I love your lures and these are cool. And then eventually I just break down and I'm like, um, would I be able to to like take a popper to test? And it's just like, oh no, 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 no. Yeah, no, like, no. I mean, I'm so not- it's like, man, you see all this stuff that's like, God, that's rad, and like I can't even get like. Nobody can get their hands on it. You know what I mean? Like it's not available in this country, but it's staring you in the face. Or even you know, back in the day when you had to do things old school. So you're trying to get a contact information, and you, the card has like it just looks like a well Chinese phone book, right? And you know, you got something in you're like, okay, who speaks? It's like me and you wouldn't go rent a table in Seoul, right? right. And, and try to just without like, having a translator there. Yeah, I don't get it, and because yeah. it costs a lot. This is not like it's this not isn't a Tony Fair. Here. This is. This yeah. is a lot of stuff going down, and there's a lot of logistics. So it's like, how could you be so unprepared? Well, and and to that end, like you know, it, it, that's one thing to be you know a foreign tackle company, but it's not cheap to be here. I don't know what a booth costs, but it costs a lot of money. And you know, you, you're walking around and you see all the big players, you know, all the big lore companies and things. And there's like you know, million dollar booths, yeah, pa- million dollar booth, Pantera playing, you know, like it's like a party scene. And especially if they have a product that everybody's really jacked on, it's just like crap. Crowds full of people there the whole damn time. And then you see like some booth for some organization or somebody who makes like props for boats. And it's like, God, they spent so much money and like they're just like twiddling their thumbs. Like, no, you know what I mean? Like they're not the cool booth. And I feel I feel so bad. You know what I mean? Like 
it's got to be such a bummer to be at like a really low traffic booth, you know, next to freaking Livingston Lures that's like rocking out. It's kind of like you ever go in some of those little touristy shops and you're like, if you sold every single thing in here, how could you pay your rent? Right. <laughs> and I feel like there's certain companies here, like if you got every single person that applies to your game here, how could you still make it? Right. But the reality is, is, you know, the iCast is so many different things for so many different people. And I think one of the things that I don't like about it as much now, it's kind of like the world. We've got these giant tackle companies and we've got the pure fishings and these people that are like dominant across multiple lines. I yeah. Mean, I heard today that um, 13 fishing. Yeah. Do you heard about that? Rappel acquired 49% of them. I did not know that. Huh. Inside tip. Wow. Well, so, you said it, not me. So if it's not accurate, it's not my ass. Uh, it's, it, yeah, it's around. But at any rate, the, my point is, is like when I first came to my, my first ICAST and I was, you know, a glimmer in the eye of these people and I'm seeing Gary Roach and, the, you know, all these. Yeah. Al Linder was still coming to these things. Yeah. And you would go in there and you would see companies that were legit startups that this is how they're going to try to get their foot in the right. door. Right. That doesn't happen anymore because the conglomerates eat them up and they shut them down or they buy them up or. Yeah. Well, and you know, dude, and it, 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 it's a, it's a really great point because I think, you know, I, I tell these younger people who are here for the first time, like, you know, stay gold pony boy, like, you know, bask in it. Like if you're enjoying it and your mind's blown because I've seen it change too, where, you know, five years ago, six years ago, you didn't really know like what new big releases were going to drop until you walked through that door. And now I get five thousand. Like that's with, number one on my list. Yeah, with the big players, the big companies, I know exactly every single thing that they're going to release, and that I'm going to see weeks before I get here. Well, and 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 here's the deal with that. Me and you are privy to a lot of things. We have a lot of. I mean. My, uh, 90% of my friends are in the fishing industry, probably. Right, right. And we know a lot of the PR people. We know the people that are actually writing these releases. Sure. We have written them. Sure. Well, yeah. I have not, but... So, no? I don't write press releases. <laughs> Any rate, <Shh>. so... <laughs> the, the, the reality of it is, is these things have changed where now it's the Bassmaster Classic that's the release. So, yeah. me and you used to get these things a week or two before. Psh, don't tell anybody. And, you know, yeah, they're, they're all embargoed. You know it's always that, embargoed. Yeah, you know yeah. how that works. But guess what? Now it's the Bassmaster Classic that Joe Schmo is going to where it is a public deal. And they're, everybody – it's kind of like Christmas decorations. And they're trying to get these things out. And pretty soon it's like July they're selling Christmas you know, decorations. It's just right. when is enough or what, what changes? I mean, are we just going to release stuff two years in advance now? Yeah. Yeah, and look, I don't want to give the impression that I'm not stoked to see – you know what the, the 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 big guys are doing. Um, you know there was some there was some pretty cool stuff that came out this year from a lot of the big players. But like if you look at like the coverage I've done on iCast over the years, especially video form, um, if it looks like I gravitate towards the little guys, it's only because they're the ones that don't have the PR juice. They ain't got the big voice, right? So they they don't have the PR juice ahead of time to show you. What you're actually going to see here, so they're the ones that do surprise me. You know, like it's like, oh shit, that's that's really cool. You know, and I and, and you feel like sometimes the whole world is covering what the big players are doing, and maybe not as many this guy. And I'm I'm always looking for the thing that like not everybody else is necessarily jumping to. But to get back to your point about how. Back in the day, like this is where if you were a tackle company, you came to try, try and make yourself. Man, for every awesome tackle company, whether it's lures or terminal tackle, you know, I spend these time talking to these people and like their heart and freaking soul is in it. They ponied up the money to be here. 99% of the time, I don't ever see them again. I got a quick story on that. So Shoot. probably about 15 years ago, I won't say it's my biggest blunder in the fishing industry, but I'm looking at Gary Roach. I'm gonna throw this could be your biggest blunder in the fishing industry because right I just, here tonight. I'm calling out the legend of all legends, but <laughs> he, was, he was like, hey, I'm by the big doors. So like, there's big doors all around. This is in Vegas. Right, right. I'm like, there's doors all around the thing. You know, you remember how the, there's corridors. I mean, yeah. It's just like a bazillion of them. Oh, we're so going to talk about Vegas. Don't you worry. Okay. So <laughs> this is before, again, cell phones. I mean, this is like, I don't remember if I had one or not, but this is at least 15 years ago. Right. And the long and the short of it is I'm trying to hook up with my mentor and legend of the time that I... 
thankfully knew my name, Gary Roach, and he's got his name on every single thing on the planet then. Yeah. And we're trying to hook up on something. You know, he's introducing me to somebody. And he's like, I'm by the big door. And I'm like, well, they're all big doors, and we're trying to get the name. <laughs> and So I literally bump into this guy who – he was like a bubblegum shrimp dude from Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And I literally, when I say ran into him, we literally like back to back ran into each other. And I'm looking at this guy. He's got this little rack that looked like it was straight up out of like a save a lot or something. Right. His booth was like five cents. And I'm looking and he had a net magnet. Uh huh. And I'm like, and you know, you're not allowed to buy any. And this is, again, things are different. This is even from what you used to, if you remember back to your early days. And he, I said to him, I said, hey man, I know we can't buy anything here, but I said, can I? Buy two of those for twenty bucks or whatever you do. Right, I right, right. I you just, like immediately. That. Yeah. I'm like, that is what iCast should be about, right? To me, yeah. And here's this guy that's trying to get. So as I talked to this guy, he literally had about four teeth in his mouth. I'm not trying to pick on certain people, but and this guy, he he just had a look in his face, and he told me straight up. I mean, damn near tears in his eyes. And he said, "This is my dream deal. I've sunk yeah. everything I have into this." And he goes, "I realized when I got to the show floor." before even got going that i'm way over my head because i work on a shrimp boat dude right and he's like i got a great idea and uh, he goes i'd sell this business right now for what i got in the stuff and i says well what's that he said twelve thousand dollars wow wow and and i you know i wasn't like well off not that i'm still a fishing guy right yeah but i said you know what i said i would buy that if you have a patent on this because i actually got my first patent in seventh grade which is a little known fact but a story for another day no it's the story what for what I can't even divulge. We, all I can say, it was sold to Nike. <laughs> True story. You know, you got to be smart, Joe, with these fishing. In things. seventh grade, you had a patent that was sold to Nike. So, well, it wasn't sold that year, but that's when the patent was applied for and done, yeah. Was it the pump? Dude, I can't talk. We can't. Joe, I mean, we're buddies, but I mean, there's only so much you're going to get out of me. You know what I mean? It's a long story, but it's a good deal. Yeah, a seventh grade uh, project. Pony up, smarter than you thought, huh? Any rate, so here, let's go back to Bubba Gump. Sure. I'm floored right now, but we'll let it go because we're going to get way the f*** off topic if we do that. So go ahead. Bubba so, yeah, Gump. this guy, he says, I'd sell this thing. No, I had you know, a little bit of experience with this, even though it's still a young guy. And uh, I had friends at the time, you know, that, that was uh, – so maybe this could even help clear up what year. But a buddy of mine was the primary owner of Beckman Nets, and I knew other people, yeah. you know, at, at – just like you, you know, do at this point at free bill and here and there. And I thought, man, I could get this on these nets just because of my relationships. Right, but like, right. Even if I didn't, like, I mean, this guy's, I, I know because we did molding and things and I was involved with that, you know, as a kid through my parents and doing some stuff. And I'm like, this thing is, if he really is going to sign this over. And he's just a patent alone because I knew what that cost just to get that done. Right. Well, as it turned out, he went outside and he called his partner, which I did not know about. And it turns out that he had not fully paid that patent off, and there was uh, there was a clause in there. Yeah. And this is where Bubba Gum Shrimp got a real uh, awakening here. Of you know, the lawyer had first right of refusal, and so he owed him, let's say, seven grand or something ballpark. I think is what right, it was. right. So he said, you know, I'm calling in my card, and so now a lawyer, big city lawyer, has got a fishing net you know, mold and patent and who had zero intention of doing anything with it, had zero knowledge of what a Beckman net was. Right. We don't have Google yet. Right. So, and he don't have time because he's charging everybody 400 bucks an hour or whatever he's doing. Right. But this thing basically just went away. Yeah. Dude, I, you know, I, I, I was straight up and this is, this is, uh, you know, I have, I have personally like damn near ruined a couple companies and completely unintentionally, right? And that sounds harsh, but you got to hear me out. Like, I mean, you're so mean to me sometimes. I could see this, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, Nike. Uh, no. So listen, right? So years ago, we used to do this um, this lore package, this lore story every every year in Field and Stream. And I would find the six best new bass lures, all different categories, soft baits, hard baits, whatever, uh, at ICAST. And I would call them all in. And then I had a whole pool of six bass guides from around the country that I would send the entire box of lures to with a huge questionnaire I'd put it together. And they'd have a couple months to test them and fish them. And all the, the info and the story and the ranking was based off of these guides actually fishing these new lures. This could get really ugly, flyinglure.com. Well, okay. So I always liked to have sort of a sleeper in there. You know, like you had all your players. Your Strike King was always in there. You know, uh, your Berkeleys. Like they were always included if they had something new. 
But it was always nice to try and like throw in an outlier just to make it a more interesting story. And there the was one that everybody doesn't know about. The, exactly. Yeah, like okay, we know about a Zoom fluke, dude. Thanks. Yeah, that's exactly so right. Zoom fluke has five new colors. Great. Yeah. And there was a year here. Um, and I mean, there's no reason to not call it out. They were called Piranha Lore. You might remember it. It was a little stick bait, and it had an open mouth with like shark teeth in it, and flared gills with the gills cut out. Very different looking, and a, and a lip, right? So I talked to the guys, and I was like, "What's what's the deal? Like, what's what's your shtick?" And he's like, "Well, you know." The bait walks underwater and the gills kind of, you know, they make a bubble trail. And if you wanted to, you could put like scent in the mouth. <laughs> stop. Will you stop? God, you're cocky. I'm just thinking helicopter lure, but go ahead. <laughs> no, give me a little credit because the helicopter lure, like, I, I don't know. But so I was just thinking about the one that was out last year that was like the electric eel thing that was supposed to make it look like, you know what I'm talking about? No. Yeah, you had you had one. The thing that was like the made of you made of supposed to make a fish look alive or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like a. I'm sure that's around. That was essentially a um, a vibrator that you just <laughs> jammed up the ass of a dead bait fish. Is what that was. Uh, just when I thought we were going to keep it classy, yeah, we, back to we, we junior weren't. high. <laughs> I think this is going to get less classy the further we go. But um, As so, most things were together on. Yeah, I know. Let me finish my damn story. So I talked to these guys, and they were amped, dude. This was their first eye cast. They were amped. And they were getting a fair amount of attention because the lures were just so different looking. And I told them, I said, I do this piece, this roundup with these guides, send the lures all over the country. And I said, you know, would you guys be interested in being a part of it? And they were like, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Of course. Hell, that's yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. And I said, look, though, here's the thing. Like, are you confident in your product? Because I'm going to publish. I'm, I'm going to publish what these guys say. Like, you know what I mean? And my guys are going to be very honest. And I'm going to publish it. You know? Oh, dude, our lures. Da, 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 da. They were the only lure to ever get like a one out of ten in the entire package. Like they didn't run right. The guys who were fishing them didn't get. I mean, not one. Like literally, the comments were like, "I don't get this lure. I read the package. I don't know what it's supposed to do." And I didn't feel that bad because I I warned them. I said, like, we'd love to include you, but you got to be able to, to, to take what comes. And, I mean, they're gone. And was that a direct result of that? No, but it sure as hell didn't help, you know? Yeah. That, uh, there was a lot of things going on there. I don't think you have to feel like losing sleep over this oh, situation. I, I, but... I don't be, because, dude, you're here at ICAST. You're showing me a product. You're telling me that it does this, this, and this and works. I'm going to take your word for it. You know, and and that right there, dude, that story, I think you'll agree, ties right into, you know, one thing that drives me a little nuts here is that they have these awards, you know, best in show, best new soft bait, best hard lore, best whatever, except like none of them have any like crazy, all the people voting for them, none of them have fished them, period let alone over any amount of time to actually make an educated get, you know, decision on whether they're actually good or not. And don't get me going on some of the people that are voting. <laughs> well, yeah. Because <laughs> that's going to go south quickly. So we don't need to get on that. It, it's irrelevant. But, you know, uh, I mean, my, my point is, like, you know, yeah, this year the Lunker Hunt Phantom Spider won, right? Awesome looking lore. And Lunker Hunt has made some really fishy shit over the years, like really smart stuff. And this spider was like the talk of the show. You know what I mean? And uh, it won. It's a hollow body top water spider. And there was an on the water test thing. Where- when you when you say talk of the show, let's just clarify this for even my own personal understanding. Is it the talk of the show because people are like, are you freaking kidding me? What kind of shit won again? Or is it more of like where would, who would actually use that? Or is it because it's literally like a Halloween cliche? It's funny because I think that there are a fair amount of skeptics 
yet there have to be enough believers because the damn thing was voted the best new I forget if it's the best new lore overall or the best new soft bait. Maybe it's both, but it, it, it took a bucket those. did one win one year too though. Correct. But you know and there people have seen this spider There's on this nice bucket though. God, with your bucket. People ha- have seen that spider on the water here. They did demos on the water. But a demo on the water is not the same to me as catching fish. And I you know, there have been a lot of lure winners here. Like mammals are in, man. Like if it's a if it's like a, a baby panda bear wake bait, it's like people go nuts for it. But then you look at a lot of this stuff, these bats and rats and the blue the the blackbird. The blackbird. You know, and you know what I hear funny ones? So Aaron Martins I happened to do some fishing with on a media thing. Yeah. And he went into this thing and I was kinda like basically doing the same thing like the spider. So that's so I, I, I asked that question because in all seriousness, like Aaron Martins is he's a crazy dude, but the guy is fishy as all get up. He's like arguably one of the best of all time and he's like, No. And he gave me ten scenarios on where these birds fall out of these nests and these largemouth go up and eat them, and guess what? It's not the twelve inches. And so he actually has, he's made these whole hand-tied lures for years. So when he saw that there was this blackbird lure out, he was just going nuts. Okay, listen. I'm not saying that fish don't eat these things. Um, And I'm also not saying that there aren't scenarios like that. You know, like I was talking to a guy on the floor the other day about duck lures. Like our dads, like they had those lures. Well, yeah, I mean, there's, there's better duck lures now, but... You know, one of the dudes was from Alabama and one was from Canada. And the, the, the kid from Alabama, big bass guy, he was saying, like, you know, on the right day, I might get a bass, you know, in like a cypress stump field to eat one of those ducks. But on average, like my bass just aren't really cued into eating that regularly. And the Canadian guy's like, oh, well, <laughs> when all the ducks up in Canada, you know, they all have their babies at the same time. And it's like a hatch in fly fishing. It's like for those couple of weeks. Yeah, it's like for those couple weeks, the bass are up there killing it. But that's not that's not my point. I'm not I'm not saying that that stuff doesn't catch fish. I'm just saying I don't know if the spider is going to catch fish. That was my point. It's like the I didn't believe the blackbird thing, but I'm like this one, to be so specific. Like there has to be a little something to it. Like really, do you need a giant tarantula for largemouth? Well, I'm sure it will catch fish because it wiggles on the surface. So at some point. It's going to wiggle in the right face, but but my point is like all this stuff is so like blown up here. It's it's been like bats and rats and snakes and ducks and spiders, but then you know by next summer, it, it, I, I don't see those lures ending up in everybody's tackle box, and I certainly am not seeing you know follow up pictures throughout the year later. Yeah, like who stocks like, that? Is tackle warehouse yeah, going to have of that? like all your best? Yeah, I don't even care about that. I'm just saying like. You don't see a lot of pictures of bass with these lures in their mouths yet. So that's back to my question. Is it because Tackle Warehouse and Bass Pro don't carry that? So it's not as readily available to the masses? Or is it because it just realistically is like a broken clock lure, which works twice a day at best? I don't know the answer to that, but I have a very good friend here who I know listens to this podcast, so he'll appreciate this, but I'll leave him out of it. Uh, who works for a company that makes very good soft plastics. And his reaction to the spider winning was, you know what, dude? Next year I'm going to make a f***ing dinosaur and make it a line-through model, and I guarantee you the baby dinosaur line-through will win best in show. Okay. So what is that saying about the show, then? Well, I, my, my point is, if you look at the new lures coming out, there were some things that I saw that were really innovative, really smart, but they're really boring, you know? And it's like... Because it's a spider or a duck or a bat, it, it's just everybody's like, oh, spider, duck, and bat, best new lore vote. When this guy over here who's making something that's it's, it's really boring. But if you stop and actually break down what he's made, you're like, damn, so that is smart. At the risk of really digging myself a hole, which has never stopped me before, uh, it it's not the show's fault when I just said that. You know, is, is it the media's fault? Is it the guys that are that are voting on these things, like that probably don't fish, or that they need something so crazy yet none of them would, will have it in their personal boxes, and if they do, it won't be next year. Yeah, well, I, uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, so from the media, it's like uh, from media side, fake news. I took pictures of the spider because that's kind of what you're here for. Like, you're here looking for the spider. 
You're here looking for the spider because you know you're the perpetuating sp- the fake news. Too. Yeah, I, I am. I dude, I am because you know that the spider is what's going to get people looking on Instagram and Facebook and stuff. But I don't see anything wrong with that because it's it's interesting and it's eye catching. But then, <sighs> but then, to make it translate to the best new lore, is it the best? new lore at this show this year i hear what you're saying my translation is if i'm on the same page is is like hey it's my job to kind of put this out there because it's unique but it's not my job and i certainly didn't vote for it to make it the best new lure is right. that simply put yeah well you're just clearing your own name but i think you help perpetuate that i see I, and i understand because i'm i don't have your exact role right but i would think that for some of the people i've done gear galleries and things for that that probably would not have been on theirs. But again, it depends on the outlet. Well, yeah, but it's, I, I look at it like movie reviewers. Like you could say like this movie, as far as I'm concerned, is absolutely going to be the next Oscar winner. But like a bunch of people saying that in the media doesn't make it win the Oscar. Like Caddyshack is a legend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the only movie Ross has ever seen in his life. Mm-hmm. And Fast and the Furious. No, we don't do Fast and Furious, but I know me a little bit of Spalding. <laughs> Can I have a hot dog and a, ha- and a hamburger? Hot dog and hamburger? Yeah. Well, yeah. So, <laughs> so I, mean, I Snickers in the pool. Seriously. Yeah, I know, okay. I know, I know. Anyway, I don't know, man. I I, I feel like that's that's enough about the uh, the mammal lures, but you know, it, it's just it's just funny because whether you believe in him or not, it's like I know that that's. You know what people want to see, and everybody else here is doing any kind of media knows that that's what people want to see. And like, even just your friends want to. Do you get text throughout the day? I do. You know, I, I'm caught up with this whole thing that we talked about. We're here for different reasons, but it's the same thing where people are expecting. Or people like friends of mine are expecting. Hey, I want to see the new trolling motor. I want to right. see the new this or whatever it may be. And the moment that I put that first post up, so that everybody knows, hey, I'm actually here. Or even people that follow what I do or guide clients, whatever it may be. Like, I start getting the text messages or the Facebook things or whatever of like, hey, can you go get a picture with this girl over there? And I'm like, yeah, not good at family home. (laughs) Not not good. Not good for the family life. Thanks, Bob. Do do you know? I get like, dude, can you grab me a catalog from here? And in my head, I'm thinking, like, I got five more appointments and that's like a mile and a half across the floor that way. No, I cannot. (laughs) <laughs> I get you get all of those things like that, but I think that goes into the misconception of this is not th- this is a professional industry conference. It's not a sports show. That's what the average guy doesn't understand. Yeah, and and we're here to do work, and me, me and you do different things when we're here as do the next ten people. Everybody has a kind of a different role depending on what you're doing, but it's a sales and marketing show, plain and simple. Is that? Fair. Yeah, no, that's that's very fair. That's very fair. Um, you know, but and I don't, I just don't think people understand. Like, I'm in meetings. Like, I'm in like legitimate closed door desk meetings, and people are like, "Oh, go take a picture with you know Bay Winkleman." Yeah, and I'm like, I don't even know. Where, there's a lot of people here. Like this, you, it's bigger than a football field. I don't know how big it is. In yeah, there. but I. I only ran into you like one time. Yeah, I know, dude. I mean, there there are dozens of friends of mine that are here. That I mean, so we're done. It's Thursday night. We're both out in the morning. We're not going back to the show floor. Dozens of friends that I, I didn't even shake their hands. I mean, you could walk around all day and not bump into another person. And that's a little. And I always a... seem to bump into you, no matter what. <laughs> Tracking device. <laughs> you know, and, and that's part of the deal because some of these people, again, rather they're industry friends, rather they're partners, or whatever it may be, is you know. All of like-minded people, I guess you could say, you know, are in one spot, and you know, it's a chance. Even though he didn't show this year, Kerber, you know, the Hammer, all these guys that we kind of we, we kind of yuck it up. We have a good time. Maybe we go share a beer or two. But you get to see. I mean, in all seriousness, like I'm not serious often, but you know, the camaraderie in these guys that are legitimate friends. But the fact that they live a thousand miles away, and I'm working twenty four seven the other way, like I enjoy. It. That's the thing that I do oh, not get tired of, dude. Dude, believe, look, believe me, like. Despite the work on the floor and like the time on the floor, that is what I get off on. It's just, it's like, imagine every friend that you've ever had for three days a year is in the same place. But if, if in the next three minutes it was our job to explain to people that this isn't like a sports show and you're just looking at lures trying to buy this or that because you can't really buy anything here. No. 
is is how much work is involved, like your feet and your back. Like this is this is not like I said, I, I'm in a lot of closed door meetings. I don't dress in the flip flops and the shorts and stuff like oh, that. Oh, I do. I flip flop. I know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. care. I mean, that, and that's 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 fine. But I mean, this is a professional deal, and there's, I mean, you're like feet and back. If they they don't hurt after this, you're just a tough dude because. I think we walked, I don't know, you know, of course this is not me, this might be my other half. I think we did like 25,000 steps or something yesterday. And oh, you did the step counting thing? I don't even know what that means. But I know that it's more than what we were targeted. <laughs> yeah. I think I walk more here in three days than I do the entire rest of the year. So it's also like my exercise. Because he's got a scooter at home, I heard. <laughs> but dude you know you know one thing that is cool and like and i kind of i kind of don't get tired of this right like i remember my my first year here ever and and the first time guys feel the same way it's like all of a sudden you're walking it's like holy shit that is bill dance he is two feet from me like i've been watching that dude since i was two years old you know i i like i i remember like the second year i was here i had a walk through with with like trocar hooks and they're like uh, oh, hey, Joe, you're here for your appointment. Um, what have, uh, Shaw, Shaw Grigsby, Shaw Grigsby going to show you the, the, the lineup. And I'm like, Shaw Grigsby is going to show me around. One more cast. Yeah, Are I, you d- kidding d- me? It's crazy, man. It's like, you know, you're taking a leak and it's like, you know, oh my God, KVD's in the urinal right next to me. It's like, I'm, I'm pissing next to KVD, you know? Um, so it, man, it, that, that, that is cool. And I still, I still really enjoy that. Though, funny one time, st- one time I actually pooped next to a guy and his, his shit did stink. <laughs> Throw that out there. Oh, Jesus. Uh, but I was going to say, and I think you'll understand too, it's, it's funny too when you haven't been here before because you have a, like a, a picture in your head of those people and they're those people on the floor. But then if you, if you bump into them like peripherally, like there's yeah, a lot maybe. of parties and a yeah. lot of goings on. And man, I got I to gotta, I gotta lay this one down because it is one of the most legendary stories. <laughs> Of my, now you're already laughing because you know the name, and I'm putting this out there right now. People, you, if you aren't listening, you better start listening right now. I, I have. This is like nobody messaged me and asked me the name because you would have to torture. Like, like it would. You, I, I, I will not give up the name. We are not saying the name. He won't, but for enough money, I might. Anyway, <laughs> I cast flip flops between Vegas and Orlando. And the first year I ever went to it, it was, it was in Vegas. So I'm 22 years old, never been to Vegas before either. And uh, I go out to dinner, um, you know, that night. And I, I'm out pretty late getting drunk with some buddies. And it's like 2 in the morning. And, um, you know, I come back to the hotel in a cab. And I'm, I'm talking to the cabbie. And he's like, yeah, I've been to Vegas before. I'm like, no, sir, never been. Uh, I've never been here, you know. And he's like, you see that bench over there? And there's a bench in front of the hotel. He's like, every one of them girls on that bench, prostitute. I'm like, no, sir. I'm like, you know, like all naive, you know. I'm like, no, they're not. That's not what they are. And I just yeah, pull some joke yeah, from yeah, Iowa. Like, they are not. They're just they're just people outside getting some of this hot air at two a.m. Yeah, two a.m. Right. So, so I'm, I'm looking at the girls on the bench, and I just happen to, to notice there's one in like this skin tight, very loud neon purple dress. So I go in and it's late, man. There's like nobody around. There's nobody at the lobby bar, nothing. And I remember I had this really long walk to the elevator bank. And I get to the elevator bank, like hallway after hallway, still nobody around. I'm on like the 20th something floor. And I I push the button and uh, I get in the elevator and it's the door is closing. And at the very last second, this hand comes through the door and stops the elevator. Was it a big hand or a small hand? I'm not telling you what size hand it was. Okay. I won't even give you that. And the door stops and opens back up, and standing in front of me, looking me right in the face, is a a pretty well-known TV. Not so much anymore, but like back in the day, fairly... L- listen, I don't know if you're trying to camouflage this. People would know who this is. Fine. And the door opens, and here's this guy. And he's staring me right in the face. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so-and-so. And And he steps into the elevator, and behind him is the hooker in the skin-tight purple dress, right? And they get on the elevator, and I was just like, holy shit, right? Remember, nobody knows who I am. I'm the intern. So, like, he doesn't even know. I'm just a kid in an elevator at 2 o'clock in the morning. So they get in, and they, they get behind me. 
And the door closes, so like my face is like against the door. I'm like staring at the back of the door, and of course it's dead quiet. Nobody is talking, and I'm just like, oh my god, I can't believe this. So I get off the elevator, and like nothing happened. But to this day, I'm so pissed at myself <laughs> for not spinning around in the moment and just going, Mister So and So, I just got to say I am a huge fan, and Mrs. So and So, you are such a lucky lady. Like to this day, I'm like. Damn it! Why didn't I do that? I think the only thing I can say is that I have to also say that I am me, DM me, call me, text me. I'm not going to tell you either because I'll be beaten. Um, but uh, there's so many things like this. Oh, there really dude. is. I mean, this is yeah. just one. Like some of these, like you can only. It's and everybody sitting there wants to hear all the stuff. I get it, but it's yeah. like, okay, in your job, could you do that too? Could you say these things? There is some interesting things because in any profession there are some dirt bags. Yeah. And there are some dudes that you think are good dudes and they're actually dirt bags. That's just yeah. a fact. And I mean and you, you you see it here too because you know you talk about part of the appeal being hanging with your friends and that's absolutely true. Like the most fun part of iCast for me is getting together with people after the show, you know, and uh getting a little banged up although not so much anymore. Well, most of the deals, I mean even me and you are in different ends of this, but from like a sponsorship and dealing with the companies and stuff, honestly, most of the business, they don't talk about it on the showroom floor. It ends up happening afterwards. Right. I and mean, that, and that's not exclusive to iCast or fishing. That's true. That's true. I mean, that, you know, the best stuff happens over beers usually. But like, you know, to set the scene, it's so funny um, because a lot of the companies here, they throw after parties. And it's, we're missing it, one right now. I, I know we are, and I'm okay with it. Uh, but we're, we're missing 10 right now. Because it's this giant game of one-upsmanship of like who has have you the, heard some of the numbers the best offsite that party they spend on these like we're talking six I, figures I don't care like, whatever but so the one to be at like the one to be at is the Costa party right and I love Costa I have, I have great friends there you know and I love Costa sunglasses I fish with those guys kudos for you being the awesome party. But, dude, like, the whole place, like, I was at dinner the first night I was here, and there were dudes at the bar where I was having dinner, and it, the whole conversation was, all right, bro, so you, you got to you gotta pass to the coast? You got two, bro. If you do, can I have the other one? Mike, didn't you say you were, you were getting passes to the coast party? And it's just like, anybody who is anybody... You have to go to the Costa party. Like, no matter what the other parties are, if you are like a somebody here, you need passes to the Costa party. Agreed? I think that is the perception. I have been to the Costa party. Yes. I don't know that I need to go again. No disrespect to Costa no. or the party, but it's me and you are kind of in the same thing. It's just thing. not me. See, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, no disrespect at all, but. I have gone to the Costa party, right? And I do get invited every year, so, you know, whatever. Well, don't feel too special because right. yeah. this guy's getting double invited. You know what I'm saying? Oh, is that right? Whoop, whoop. The- <laughs> but I've gone, and they throw the kind of party that's like you can't move. You're that's just exactly like-, like they have appetizer and everything, but it's, it's like going to a free bar somewhere. Yeah, that's what I mean, it is. it is like shoulder to shoulder, other people sweat, and it's just <laughs> – and I'm like, this is not, it's just not my scene. No. And they bring out the appetizers and it's kind of like, you know, that it was at a prisoner of a war camp or something. These things are just, just that's, hustle. That's rude. <laughs> it, it, that was a terrible example. But I mean, it's I, like uh, animals at the zoo that haven't been fed. How about that? Because that's well, about yeah. what it is. Yeah. And, and, you know, so nothing against it, but I would rather take five good friends to some dump of a bar off off scene and just pay for my own beers and sit and have a good time. And that's exactly what we did last night. Exactly. You know, so, you know, but it's just so funny, this whole, like, you know, got to get in the Costa party. Dude. But don't you think that too, that, that, you know, I've seen the KVDs at those things, you know, when I've been, right. Through. But generally, you know, generally speaking, so there's always some agendas with things and people because of affiliations and things that are kind of obligated to go. But don't you think that, People are sometimes just trying too hard, or the reality is, is these are the people that probably shouldn't be there. There's a lot of those guys that are like, I mean, th- these are the people you're like, well, how did you get into ICAST, and what do you do exactly? Yeah, well, yeah, there, there's a there's a ton more. It's of like that. a col- it's like a college deal. It well, it is, and and I, I I see that now because it's not open to the public that just getting in the door is some new status symbol. You know, you see somebody on Facebook or Instagram, <laughs> it's it? like. Yeah, it's like that's the, I, that's I've got 
I'd like to talk about that. I don't know if now is too early. No, but. no, no. We can absolutely talk about it because I feel that way. It's it's like just being able to say I got a badge is is like I'm cooler than you. I don't look at this as like this is an exclusive thing because this is my job. Yeah, but, but see, the thing is, I don't really care who's here. Like I don't. I, it makes n- absolutely no difference to me. Dude, so, if, if you got a badge, I don't care. There's hundred. I don't care. It if it affects me zero who's but here it do, but it it does affect you because when you're at x booth or you're doing whatever and you can't get at it or there's craziness or you're trying to shoot something and you've got people running all over acting like wild crazy and you know whatever then you can't do your thing and, and i can tell you the manufacturers because several of my sponsors are here and marketing people they work with and they're like we are out of catalogs and we went through five thousand and there's only ten thousand people here and it's the first hour because someone picked up eight million catalogs because <laughs> they thought that they were going to start a fire with it or something. I don't know, but the, the companies they want to deal with they 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 want to un, uninterrupted talk to Joe Cermelli from Field and Stream and you want to quantify and qualify you know their potential customer or media person and not deal with all the rigmarole, man. So well, it does it does affect even you. And and them and in a different way. I see what you're saying, right? And I don't disagree with it. But it, to me, it's just more like an obnoxious thing. So, you know, it, it, you'll appreciate this, right? So I I come here with a Sony Handycam. It's a very good camera. It is the only f-ing Handycam on the entire show floor. Like I may like using a Sony Handycam on the show floor would be the equivalent of me using like my rotary cell phone. Like if I had like a rotary phone. So I notice nowadays that like if you don't have an SLR camera with the fancy light bar attachment Next. and the boom mic, you're a, you're a f-ing joke. Like these, these kids with their fancy light bars and their SLR cameras see me roll up with my – literally, I have a favorite show backpack. It just fits everything nice, but it's so old. Like half of it's like super glued together. Right, so I roll up, and there's there's twenty kids there Instagramming and shooting video spots with their SLRs. Who's this dude, bro? Right, so they probably look at me with my dirty backpack and my <laughs> my handy cam. Like this this f-ing guy must be from like the Joey Bag of Donuts fishing blog over <laughs> it here. Ha- it doesn't help that you're from Jersey, right? But you know what? I just don't. I just don't give a shit. Like I'll, I'll wait for you to get out of the way so I can shoot my video spot. Like I don't really care. In fact, you know, it's it's like I said. So it's just like obnoxious because five years ago, if you showed up to a booth with any camera, those people really wanted to talk they to you. Go, like, yeah, like what are you doing, dude? What the are you doing? YouTube popping now, dude. I went up to one lure company. Like, can we do this later? No, dude. I I went up to the one lure company and Field and Streams right there on my badge. Everybody's got a it badge. Said no you can video, see where I'm no, from. No, um, I said saw some that said no videography, no, 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 still no, it wasn't that at all. But they they had this lore, and frankly, um, I thought it was kind of a dumb lore. But it was people were talking about it, same deal. And I I I, I get there, and there's a college bass team there, just every every phone out, just firing, just like all over this lore, right? So I waited, and then I waited to get one of the dudes' attention, and. Uh, I was like, hey, man, you guys have a test tank or anything? Because, like, I'd, I'd really kind of like to see this one, you know, in some water. You know what I mean? And he's like, uh, well, like, uh, media water day was yesterday, dude. And I was like, yeah, well, I wasn't there. Uh, well, um, I mean, maybe if you can convince one of the guys to, like, take a walk outside with you. But I don't know, man. We're all We're all really busy. And uh, my re- like in my head, I'm like, you know what? Instead, I'm gonna go buy you a hot cup of go f- yourself because I actually don't really give a shit about your lore. Like, you see who I'm here with. Like, we can put that on a, a Facebook page with over a million people. But frankly, like, that's your loss, dude. Like, because there's four million other lures here for me to shoot. So, like, if if you don't give a shit, I really don't give a shit. I actually think your lore is stupid. So I'm gonna walk away. You're, you know, you really are a meanie. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm I not agree. a meanie. I, and I, I want to back up on one other one that's just funny because this, like, even though there's 30 iCasts or whatever between us, but a really funny one that happened. I made an appointment today to, you know, or I made it three months ago for 15 minutes with a person that we both know very well. 
And I work with a competitor, and it was no business discussed, but it was one of those, I don't see them often. We live a very long way away. Right. We email back and right. forth every now and then, hey, buddy. Well, again, we work with you know competing companies, but and you know this guy. I think you consider him a friend. And I just say, hey, we just, you know, hey, how's the kid? You know, this and that. What's going on? No business discussed. And as I'm standing there, there was a guy from another company who I know, guys, and I don't know who this guy was. And he was an East Coast guy because I heard it right away. And he come rolling up in there, and he's like, yo, dude, this is the number one uh, Google Eye Fisherman. And it was literally something like that. I'm like, I don't know what the hell that f***ing is. <laughs> and he's like, in the middle of our talk, and this guy we both know, and he is like the nicest guy in the world, soft-spoken. Yeah. And he was like, he's a guy that wouldn't say like stuff like me and you would, right? And he's standing there, and his mouth just goes open. And he's like, you need to put this dude on your pro staff, man. And he goes into like just full, just, uh. I mean, screaming thing. And our friend says... I have a meeting here and like, yeah. And he just, and it was, just, it was, you just had to be there. But I, I see that all the time, dude, people having meetings and like, dude, just cut in like that. Just, yeah. I mean, that's a very, I, I get it. And it, you know, I'm going to, I have even, I did it today with one of my sponsors that was here that, you know, the, the head guy was there and hadn't seen him the entire show as we're walking out the door. And I went, patted him on the back, turned him around, shook his hand, said, Hey, thanks. Let me know if you need anything. And then sorry to interrupt carried on not trying to well let me tell you about my 1994 experience of the red man classic <laughs> where i played 94th out of a, the top 100 and i'm like yeah like seriously where did you think and, th- and this guy that we know you know said he was like he actually said to me which i was just blown because he's so laid back and chill that yeah. even in front of even though he's thinking that he wouldn't say it to either yeah, one yeah, of yeah, us yeah. You know, we've known him forever is he was like that was the most abrasive, rude thing I've seen today. <laughs> and I'm like, just today? <laughs> but, the, yeah, there's a lot of that. I mean, uh, that's, yeah. you, you could tell a hundred of those, but that happened five hours ago. It's a lot. Yeah, it's yeah, because it's it's a lot of people. There's a lot of there's a lot of ego here. And it's it's just like people just trying to get their peace and be more important than you than, than you at a given booth you I mean, know there, there's a there's a friend of mine we don't work for you know with the same people or whatever but he lives 15 minutes from me and we were joking because i mean this guy's done well with things and he's travels like an insane amount right and i'm like do we literally had to schedule you he lives 15 minutes from me this is no lie and he's we literally had to schedule an appointment to talk and then we had to actually reschedule it because right. stuff hit the fan and he's like man I can say this because it's you and we were just gonna bs about you know the wife and the new right barn. right and he's like but Man, we just had the shit hit the fan with this account over here, and right. you don't mind. And I'm like, no. no. And, and we literally, it was almost a joke of how many times I went back to this booth, you know. And again, this isn't like walking across the hallway. Yeah. This is like a hundred yards, yeah. which you know you're battling through people, and everything, and then you're trying to find the guy. And now he got drugged, and he's got caught in the bathroom by some other guy. Like I ran into one of my my head sponsor guys in the urinal, and we we're talking about, you know, and he's like, yeah, you know, it's so crazy busy right now. He's like. Do you want to talk about this redo deal we got going on as we're both right there just, you know, urinalizing? <laughs> I think I made that word up, but I think we all know what we're talking about. We'll get it in the Urban Dictionary for you. Hey, do you remember when me and you met? Yeah, we met here. At ICAST. Yes. And it's because of two different people that are like, Joe and Ross need to get together even though we're going to regret this. And I... I yeah, think that's pretty accurate. And then we bumped into each other here. I was like, uh, you're Ross, huh? And no, do you remember what I said to you? Uh, I, I hate to I hate to crush your ego, but I do not. And it was good. I don't even know I don't even know if censorship if we can say it, but in all honesty, I I really shouldn't say this, but I was I was working for a, a media company doing some galleries and different things. Okay. And I acted like I had to tie my shoe because the boss man was like, you know, I'm walking in and you know, it doesn't matter. I don't know. But again, however many years ago that is, I like today I wouldn't do that. Right. right? But the reality is it's like I was kind of a respect thing, to be truthful. Like right. here, I'm not going to go up to a guy of a major competing organization when we were – after we emailed back and forth. Not that people don't – you know, nobody works for one person doing right, like right, what right. I do. And so I act like I got to tie my shoes so the whole crew goes in because they're like, it's 120 out here. And so we're going to go in there. So you were outside and you came back to do something and you were, you had your back to me and I said a very smart ass comment and you whipped around and it was like some top gun deal or something. And you're like, Ross Robertson, I really 
didn't need to meet you today or something. <laughs> and it was just like there was the love affair right there, born. <laughs> and here we are. Yeah, it was great. How many years it's, later? It's funny because those two guys, one of which unfortunately is no longer with us, yeah. the late Dave James, yeah. was like, you guys are like a match made in heaven, but I'm probably going to regret this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude, it's been good. It's been, I, 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 it's been good. I like you. People think I don't like you, but I actually do. That's the charm. That's part of the, that's, that's kind of our shtick. I mean, what are we going to do? Hug it out? Yeah, no, we're not. I mean, what do these people on the Facebook page want to see us do? Like, make out? <laughs> I mean, they sometimes like the, you know, the Redfish show? Do you know, I, and I know you do, people are like, oh, I would have went on that show. Like, he was busting your balls. I, I had to negotiate yeah. that. <laughs> people, there was, there, was, there was all kinds of things. I mean, I, had to, I, I made it rain on that walleye show, and I was smart enough to say, hey, dude, there needs to be a little some backside here. Yeah, you know, I, I, I owed that you one. Last... That's why I took you red fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, truthfully, let's be honest. I didn't want to go red fishing, I mean, although that was amazing. I wanted to do something salty because I wanted a basically a getaway in the middle of winter right i do you needed some fresh instagrams in the middle of winter yeah i needed some hot content how much instagrams did you do here at the show not enough yeah but again back to the point and i know that even probably some of the i i mean just comments on your page you know because of me or vice versa or the things that i put up people are like dude you know, i'm like i'm literally in like closed door meetings like literally in conference rooms and we're discussing, you know, the next year's deal because, I mean, that's this is my job. Yeah. And people think that it's like I'm going to run over here and take a picture of this, and I don't probably do a good enough job of putting all these things up. But I feel it's not as important because, like the the Minn Kota trolling motor that's just released, like has been everybody knows. It's not like they're going to look on my page to find that. Yeah, and that, that's the hardest thing. Like I was saying, like five years ago, you know, you walked up to a booth with a camera, people really paid attention. Yeah. Now everybody's got a camera, so. It's like you just feel like you're treading water. It's almost feel like, like dude, you're, you're kind of like a sheep. You know what I mean? Like you're just following the herd and, and shooting exactly the same thing as 40 trillion other people. And I did, I, I had to laugh. Like my favorite, my favorite in competition with an Instagrammer, uh, thing that happened. Um, Pradco, Arbogast, they put out a new version of the hula popper, which is, you know, it's a really old lore. Okay. You know what I mean? But they did a version 2.0, um, which I thought was smart. It's the same exact lore. The lore is no different other than they have these you nice know, kick-ass version. new colors, like new hardware. And it's straight up like we want the younger kids to fish these. Everybody's like hula poppers, your grandpappy's lure, you know? So like I, the kids wearing the trucker hats? Yeah. they want, Yeah. And, dude, hey, that's business, right? You want the trucker hat kid to fish the hula popper. Bell bottoms. Everything comes around, Joe. <laughs> anyway. So I go over there, and they've got a pedestal in their booth, um, you know, with like a, 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 a plexiglass cube over the top of the little Roman column. And in each corner under the plexiglass is each different color of this hula popper. So I get there, and there's a kid like going around, shooting every one through the glass, right? So I'm, I'm whatever, you know, Instagramming it up. So as he's shooting, I see my buddy Scott there. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're yucking it up. And I was like, hey, man, um, can you take this plexiglass thing off so I can put all these little... He's like, yeah, do you take the plex? I don't care. Do whatever you want. Take the plexiglass off. Oh, boy, you just off. blew the mind of somebody. Uh, so I take the plexiglass off and put it down, and I get all the lures, and I'm lining them up for my photo, and I see this Instagram kid, like, turning around, look at me like, oh. I didn't know we could do that. Oh, well, you can't. <laughs> oh, so now... Now I'm taking my Instagram photo and he literally slides his phone in next to my phone. Did to, you and touch? Because touching want, is not allowed. <laughs> dude, I wanted to turn around and be like, you're welcome, dude. I guess I'm your f***ing prop stylist. You know what I mean? Like, but that's what that's it's artistic, like. That's artistic infringement. Yeah. Are you going to, are you going to, are you going to hashtag Can you just type this up for me Joe too? Joe Cermelli prop styling? Like, you know. But it's just one of those things, like my God, man! Like it was it, it, back in the day, where you got a beat down for that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, it's it's not a big deal. I just think it's it's so funny. Uh, like like, what's really the difference? You know what I mean? Like you just took all those lore pictures, but it was like, oh my God, this guy just he removed the plexiglass and put all four lures together. I'm like, you you, you probably could have asked to do that too. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, 
I think that it's, it's again, it's one of those things. Maybe it's your title, the fact that you've been doing this forever and you know these people. Like these are a lot of. I don't even know if some of our friendships. But you know, you know the people that know you're going to do the right thing, and you know they know who's not going to run off with something. I mean, because it oh, does yeah. happen here. It does. But there's a lot of security here, especially in the it's, new product it's showcase, crazy, dude. I was going to say, like, so so people understand, like, the, the, there's the new product showcase that has everything in the running for all the best new product categories, and media can get first crack at that Tuesday night before the show even opens, and then right when it's only open to media. All the cases are unlocked. You can take anything out, touch it, feel it, wind the reel, whip the rod, take pictures of the lore, whatever you got to do. And then the next day it opens to the public, and that shit is on lockdown, dude. Like, there are some well, I've large even seen it. gentlemen in there. Yeah, back when I used to go to the new product showcase, like, religiously, like, they're start to finish because, of, again, doing some of the galleries and such, there was a certain um, people from certain ranges of the world that tended to get thrown out of those because they were trying to take pictures and copy things or whatever. And I don't really understand, again, if this was just a day or two difference or because... Oh, you're talking about like Chinese companies taking pictures so they could knock them off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, how many, I have, I don't know about you, multiple times in the new product showcase, I have seen people thrown out. I mean, literally, hands like, like guys escorting them, putting their hands behind them. I have never seen that. No, I believe you. I, I you know where they were the, literally like the one time I'm standing there and they're like, here's an arm and a camera that come up in between like the little cloaked uh, rail, right? <laughs> and the dude's just like popping off, and here comes a big guy who looked like he played for some <laughs> NFL team, and he's like <laughs> picking this dude up like he's a teacup, and he's moving him out, and they're like they're they walked him out the front door. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. There's all kinds. I mean, craziness. I think like for me, one of the things is. It's very different, you know, that we didn't really touch on. Even though it's the same show, it's a lot of the same people. In Florida, there's maybe a little bit different crowd because there's some of those companies that because it's here, like they may not go out to Vegas. Right. Because originally when I first started, it was like three out of four years it was going to be in Vegas. Yeah. Which I actually liked better myself. I hope it, I hope it never goes back to Las Vegas, Satan's anus. I, I do not like Las Vegas. Did you like it better there? Here? Absolutely. I just you like it better there in Vegas. Just, just oh, you would be, because, because you like those big, tall like drinks you get on the strip that are like eight feet tall. With Fremont the- Street. <laughs> <laughs> See, <laughs> talk to me. No, 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 not at all. It was logistics, man. Because here's the deal. So it's even like right now. I mean, when you're because of Disneyland and Disney World. And I'm not on the anti-kid theme over here, okay? But it's just a whole different deal. It's like an adult deal, and you don't have to, like, the logistics of getting, whether you were having a few adult beverages, you know, for transport. Right. Or the fact that when you leave the, the big convention center in Vegas, you aren't, like, possibly 30 minutes one way and somebody's 30 minutes the other way. Right. And it was like, everybody's right here. There's 100 places to eat. In Vegas, you felt that way? I did. Oh, see, I felt like Vegas was much harder to hang out because people would be scattered in hotels across the entire strip. Where but here, like everybody's three seconds pretty to get there. Now, nah, see, I th- at least I mean, some of the companies I work with, like one of my sponsors, they get you know some condos, and it's like a super great deal, like financially, and it's a really nice big place. You know, it's somebody's you know whatever Sea World getaway. Uh, yeah, I'll- but but again, they're like twenty minutes that way, and then another company's got them twenty minutes that way. So now all of a sudden, you're literally forty minutes if you're going to go and yeah have a adult beverage. Well, speaking of adult beverages, um, I remember did, <laughs> I remember all anybody ever used to talk about in Vegas was that like the adult film industry convention used to happen at the same time as ICAST. It did, and there was some interesting things because as a young, wide-eyed guy, I was like, what they were, is like, that? Well, yeah, I don't... They were I, in the same building. I've never, I had never been to Vegas for that, but I heard like legendary stories where like half the dudes would just leave the ICAST floor and like literally charm their way into that one. Yeah, I, there are some there are some legendary stories that I'm going to have to wait a little longer in my career to get out of me right. on that that I've seen. <laughs> Not that I was involved in, by the way, because right. I was like barely enough to drive a car then. However, yeah, out there it was just totally different because like SHOT Show especially, like they had, you know, the booth babes were maybe adult film people. You know, yeah, there was there some was interesting crossover. stuff. There is a lot less of that now, I think. Uh, there's, a, there's a different type of, um, I'm not sure how to classify the booth babes here in Orlando. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, there's less of it in, as, a, in, as a whole, but it's yeah. still there, and it's a different. 
Which is interesting to me because there's such a huge push in this industry to get more women involved in fishing. Not that exact type, though. That's after a that's a different no, crowd chaser. But you're you're missing what I'm saying. There's okay. a big initiative to get more women involved in fishing, and then like women come to ICAST and there's like booth babes all over. Which is isn't that the complete wrong message? Well, if you're in, trying to entice them to get into the fishing industry, especially when you've got yeah some girl twerking or some size zero. What booth is that? What's the booth number? Out? I'll mark it in my program. Three twenty four, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Actually, actually, Joe, we are going in tomorrow morning. <laughs> just for a quick, just for a quick one. You get a free koozie if you stay for the twerk off. <laughs> oh man, it, it's crazy because I think you do. I mean, we're, we're guys. I mean, let's be honest. Fishing, even aside, we perpetuate these things because if you didn't buy it or subscribe to it, there would be no demand. There is right. no the action, but. Um, it is a little much sometimes. I don't think it's as bad as it used to be. Like I said, back in the early days, they literally had, uh, I think, I don't know what the proper term is, adult movie stars that were maybe oh. laid off or something. Oh, yeah. like in my, Yeah, in my first few years of iCast, like, it was crazy. Dude, how, it was, Shot it, Show was way worse. Do you remember Shot the show tree shows worse. where they had they had women that were literally adult movie stars in tree stands that were, like, 30 feet in the air so you could see them from across the yes. show and everyone would, like, attack them. It was like the reverse... Of like a hawk, right, dude? Yeah, I I remember all reverse that. vulture. I remember all that because way back in the day. Oh, man, but nowadays, it's tell the story. It's just you got to tell it. I mean, it's different now because there's safe spaces and things are different. But you got to. I was just this. gonna say, like my first shot show ever. Like I like my one of my jobs was to go take pictures of booth babes for a booth babes gallery. On the Field and Stream website. See, but that wouldn't go fly. Wouldn't fly today, would it? Nope. It barely flew back then. But, like but, it was but, a but traffic. I bet you there was driver. some traffic on it. There was some traffic on That's it. A terrible job, by the way. I don't know, man. But booth babes, yeah, it's not. It's not quite like it used to be. Although I will say that, um, like some of the drunkest I've ever been has been here. Not in a while, but tr- like the only time I've ever been so drunk that I woke up and was not sure where my rental car was was here at ICAST. And it turns out it was at the Senior Frogs, like three blocks down. And how I got back to my room, uh, I, I don't remember. But, like, you, everybody's got to, like, what's the drunkest you've ever been here? I mean, I've got a few things that probably are not going to get aired. Let's just be straight up. But honestly, I, I mean, you're, and, and, you're, and you're going to you're gonna call BS on this, but this is truthful. Like, this is so important to me, you know, and part of my job that I literally try to avoid a lot of that. Honestly, because, I mean, it can get out of control. And I'm not like some crazy drinker guy anyhow. No, I know you're not. That is true. I can but, vouch for that. But the, the the reality is, is I mean, that's like, you know, I've got my better half been coming the last three years, right? right? And she was kind of like, oh, I want to go do this thing. And, and she could be a great asset because a lot of the guys here, you know, their wives, their others, whether they help drastically. I mean, they're almost like coordinators because there's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, scheduling, keep them on. There's certain guys we both know that... I don't think they could do it without their wives. Right. I mean, like, seriously. So do you have a drunk story or not? I mean, I'm trying to avoid that. So, anyway, <laughs> because I, like, honestly, like... Do you have a f***ing drunk story or not? I'm not going to give you one. Oh, my God, dude. I, I, honestly, it's, it's so important. Look, like, I'm not saying you even go out and try and get smashed. Like, when I say I've been some of the drunkest I ever was here, it's because you go out with two friends... And you end up in a bar, and if a bunch of other people you know roll in there, because we're all here at ICAST together, and it escalates from like, oh, dude, your boy at the end of the bar just bought you guys a round. So you know when you like, you started. Oh, he just bought you a round of Irish car bombs, and you're like, fuck it, whatever. And the next thing you know, your your goddamn car's at the senior frogs, and you don't know where it is in the morning. Like, what you're saying is like 15 years ago when I was in Vegas and ran into a girl that I went to school with back when I was a single guy. I mean, in the, like the stories, you know, you, you you cut off on, like, and I would tell you what happened on that. Yeah, <laughs> like that because it's my birthday when we're typically when we are I guess you have to. Understand, I know it's my birthday, and even our buddy well, Dave James. When like, do, there was some crazy when, deals. When, do, with when him. do you turn forty? A couple days, right? Oh, what number? Forty. Cut, cut, cut. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, think about this. For almost a decade or whatever, I was in Vegas for my birthday. Yeah. With a bunch of fishing dudes and a company card. Yes. 
That's the dream right there. It kind of is, but that's going to be your biography title when I ghostwrite it for you. Tr- there's it's going to be in Vegas listen, with a bunch of fishing dudes on my birthday with a company there, card by Ross Robertson, ghostwritten by Joe Cermelli. Man, he, were, he's, <laughs> he got two beers in him tonight, and he's just rolling. But in all honesty, like this is not diverting because you know me. Like I, I know. just pff, throw it out there. But. It's like, I mean, I take this very seriously because it is a work thing and we start early in the morning. You're like, you come back and dumping footage and stuff. People don't understand that. I mean, we like last night we stopped at about one in the morning. Now, yes, drinking some beers with guys, but they were people that employ me. They were literally my employers and multiple sponsors. And, and we talk, we still were drinking beers, but we were talking about things and this and that. I mean, some half ass, but a lot of the business and things that happen, honest to God, this is, we started. Like I started to tell you, honest to God, I brought the the missus here the last three years because she kind of wants to see the whole thing. Well, now she's like, oh, this is kind of like a lot of work. Like we got to get up at like five six in the morning, and we don't get back to like one in the. Morning. What do you get up at five six in the morning here for? Because we have meetings in the morning with a breakfast deal, and then we got like certain companies that I work with. They want me there an hour before to go over things. You know, before the show opens at nine. Uh, you know what? I will say um, uh, that your gig actually sounds a lot tougher than mine. Yeah. No. No kidding like i don't have to do that yeah, yeah i mean and so and it's only a few days so you pony up sure but like with her she was like holy shit this is like right. this is it. like she even had a right. different perception I, of this. I and your it. wife probably does too i get it so you're here to work i understand do you drink booth beers do you drink do you do you, in, do you... occasionally okay i hate See, draft beer is the big part of it <laughs> you know i'm, I'm, kind I, of, I'm a liquor that. snob like when you're not a hardcore drinking guy like i'm not you're a little bit of of a liquor snob. I, God, man, you're like you're you're like lame here. Um, I ask about the booth beers because I don't know about you, but like I, it's rare that I miss a meal, but I tend to at iCast. So, and I think a lot of people do that because they don't want the twelve dollar hot dog. So you walk the damn show all day on an empty stomach, and then at four o'clock, everybody starts busting out uh, freaking booth beers, and I knock back like. Two cores lights and I, and like I can't See, stand up straight. I mean, I got. Do you know me? Like we we actually have based some of our shoots around me eating. Yes. So and this is no lie. So I did. I can tell you what two hot dogs cost today because I got two hot dogs and they were twelve dollars and fifty cents. Um, and I eat them both very quickly. It looked like Kobayashi going at it. Like I probably could have beat his ass today. The last time I bought food on that floor, I think I bought you lunch and we had barbecue. And it's just like literally, I watched your. Pour the pulled pork out of a clear bag into like a hot tray, and it reminded me of that Billy. Met, like she like slapped it on the roll with a spoon so hard, and she reminded me of that Billy Madison thing. It's straight meat, like dude. It's straight meat. Joe's, I made them extra sloppy for you. That'll be thirty eight dollars, please. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the difference. They're just way more expensive. But it's street meat. But you know how many of these things? It's kind of like you know you wash your hands and three seconds later it's like you see something happen. The dude sneezes and puts yeah. his hand out, and you're like, oh, f- <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Well, so many things have happened. But I, I think have we done a, a even reasonable job of explaining to people what iCast really is? Yeah, I think, you know what, we've done a very reasonable job of explaining what iCast is to us, having been at it for a while. But all that said, I mean, look, this, look me, Hookshots, this pod is all about, like, the insider behind-the-scenes deal, and that's exactly what we're doing. But I, you might have your own opinions, but I can't stress enough that, like, as as tired as I get here, I'm still, like, psyched to go every year. And that and that's a God's honest truth. Like I'm still pumped to go. Like it is still cool to be here to and see to, hang out. to see the hammer and buddies like that, that's or a, or to see the new spider. That's a big part of it. It's it's I, you got me there. It's less so the tackle and more so Camarader. seeing everybody. It's just it's just seeing everybody. I mean, it would cost like. 30 grand and two months in order to fly around to see all the people that you can see. Like, just on my way out, I felt like we were at the end of, like, a high school football victory. Yeah. I'm high-fiving dudes that I haven't <laughs> seen forever, you know what I mean? Ran into some hookshot guys, you know, that were fans of stuff, and we, yeah. we talk a little bit. I don't know, don't personally know them, you know what I mean? So it's that fishing camaraderie. 
like I said, one of my, my boat sponsor, there's a couple guys here that, you know, working around with some people and some part stuff. And, you know, you don't see those guys all the time. So there's that part of it. But honestly, like, I hope we did a decent job of explaining a little more because I'm not trying to whine here whatsoever. Right. But I – me and you both get so many people that explain and even you are over here like giving me the one eye stink eye and i'm like no really i work like last year i i was well, at- dude, i know that you i know that you work <sighs> i got a good one i i, I mean everybody it's- works it's just like i want to talk about work i want to talk about you know fun a- after parties What's i want to talk about the time you know i gotta throw i gotta throw the hammer zach miller under the bus real quick because he's <laughs> not here this year and so this is what happens because when you're not here, when you're not here, you can't be here to defend yourself. It's basically kind of like the guy who passes out and he gets the sharpie on his face. <laughs> That's what you're going to get. Greatest moment of iCash drinking for me was we went to the Smith Optics party, which is a rival of the Costa party because they hired a metal band instead of f-ing Skrillex, right? So <laughs> we showed up. Uh, at, at this Adobe Gila, it's legendary. And this metal band's playing like Iron Maiden and shit. And uh, Miller is already like pretty over the edge by the time we get there. And at some point in the night, it doesn't take a lot. No, it's got. Well, I don't know about that, but it's got to be like midnight, right? He's fired up. We're all no, pretty just drunk. To get fired up, right? I mean, oh no, fired up. He's yes. ready to go. Yeah, he is. So I'm, I'm standing outside on the balcony. There's a balcony overlooking a plaza in this shopping center where this restaurant is. And he walks out, and he's got a giant, thick-ass cigar in his hand. And I'm like, who gave him a cigar? Right? He doesn't smoke cigars. So he's walking around going, how do I, how do I cut this thing? What do I do? And I'm like, give me it. Right? So I, like, half-ass cut it so he can smoke it. And he lights it and, like, takes, like, a 30-second drag <laughs> off of this giant cigar, inhales the whole pull exhales and within 30 seconds i watched his entire body fade to white and the next thing i know he is retching so loudly over the balcony his puke is splattering below and it hushed the entire smith optics party at adobe gila <laughs> it was greatest like a- party moment of iCast Zach Hammer Miller you just been shouted out man sorry you're not here this year bro the hammer was literally like Niagara Falls dude it was I just the entire the, the dude was like play run to the <laughs> it just like stopped <laughs> And I think, you know, the funny thing is, is we, of course... You were working while that happened. Yeah. <laughs> Sucks so bad. I'm just going to come back here and just go to, like, the cosmetics, you know, association or something. Oh, there'll be a lot less, you know, guys there, too, right? Well, be... <laughs> Jeez. we'll have, we, we have some fun. We have some fun. I had fun doing this tonight. I mean, this was fun. I mean, I would have rather been at the coast party, which I, I mean, didn't I, have I mean, two VIP tickets for, but that's cool. Well, dude, it's not that late. Go. You see, but you're not going to go. You got work to do. <laughs> see what well, I see? What I'm doing there? And, and, and you know, it's probably for my boss at Field and Stream, who's kind of a dick. <laughs> oh my God! Well, hey, listen. From the Four Points Sheridan on uh, Westwood Boulevard, Orlando, Florida. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it. That's, that's the, uh, that's the official after hours look at ICAST, uh, with, with Ross Robertson. Are you happy with all the things you said? Do you feel like we've conveyed? Have we conveyed? I think the only thing left to do is raid that absolutely weak mini bar. Yeah, it's really weak. I do have a small box of Cheez-Its though. <laughs> you know what I mean? We'll crush them up, do something. I don't know. It'll that's be no weird. $6 hot dog, but no, it's working it's on it. sure not. Anyway, uh, this was a lot of fun, and uh, I will catch you guys uh, right back here again in two weeks. As always, thanks so much for listening to the Hookshots podcast. Ross, say goodbye. (laughs) Bye-bye.